in Haiti, when you come from the, the countryside, the, the people live at, in, in poor points, they think they know everything, but it's not true. This is the, I'm, I'm the example. On, on the countryside, you have good people also, with knowledge, with vision. When you got the past president like your close friend, it's, it will be good for you to get this experience. But I will work with him to see what is the mistake he was made and what is the success he, he was made also, to put them together. Like I told on my campaign, I will continue, I will make a lot of correction and I will improve also, but I will work close with him because he is a past president, he's a, he's, a, he's a former president. It's really important for me to know exactly what is, to, to learn about his ex experience. But he's not President Martelly only. I talk with other former president in Haiti. <laughs> Tout ancien candidat, tout le monde qui t'a voté pour moi, tout le monde qui n'a pas voté pour moi, ni le monde qui n'a pas voté du tout, nous avons besoin de tout le monde. Nous avons besoin de tout pour Haïti qui a levé aucune chaîne de fils à Haïti. Et tous ceux qui ont permis cette victoire, merci beaucoup. Some breaking news now. And Haiti's President Jovenel Moïse has been assassinated at his home in Port-au-Prince. Moïse was shot dead at his home by what Haitian authorities describe as a unit of assassins. The gunmen speaking English and Spanish reportedly yelled they were DEA agents. You knew who the president was fighting against. These people hired mercenaries to kill the president and his family due to the projects for roads, electricity, drinking water supply, organization of the referendum and elections, for the final abolition of political transitions. The president has always believed in institutions and stability. Channel and Jodia, we are going to be talking about President Jovenel Moïse. Now, if you guys did not watch my previous video on his assassination, please go watch that. And as I said previously, I did not think it was right to just talk about his assassination without talking about his career, his businesses, and his presidency as a whole. So please go watch that video and definitely go make sure you guys watch my Michelle Martelly, aka Sweet Mickey President video as well because it will all make sense as well as my other videos on Preval, Aristide, Duvalier because it all kind of ties in and gives you guys a whole perspective if you guys don't know about Haitian politics you know current Haitian politics because woo child there's a lot to unpack there now if you guys are not up to speed of what's going on which I'm sure if you clicked on this video you are up to speed of what's going on sadly Jovenel Moïse was assassinated on July 7 2021 in his private home and his wife 
was also wounded in the attack and she had to be flown into Florida for treatment. Now she is alive, okay, despite a lot of the reports that were saying that she wasn't for a very long time. And she actually did speak, you know, she did come out with a statement. And it's really, really sad because um, her statements actually conflict a lot of what other statements have come out to say, which I actually did say in my previous videos. Well, like I said, go watch that. There's been a lot of conspiracies and theories going out there. And I have to say that no matter what theory that they definitely push out there, the official one that ends up coming out later on, I honestly hope that Haiti challenges it. Um, all of us as Haitians watching this and all of us as Haitians as a whole challenge everything that is fed to us because I know that whatever they try to get us to believe is going to be a whole caca caca. Um, I'm just telling you this right now. And also, I will ask that anyone watching this video that you remain respectful. People that come across this video, they may be families of the people that is affected by this or they may be family of people that may have been affected by this presidency. I feel like with every president haiti is never satisfied every single president that i personally did a video on okay whether it's preval isd Duvalier, whatever has been ridiculously affected by these presidents okay they are all accused of embezzlement gangs violence all types of shit do not come on this video trying to talk shit trying to say all of this extra shit about these presidents and how they allow this that and the third because realistically if you've done your research and you know anything about haitian politics they're all accused of the same shit so either haitians are really voting in the same type of garbage or literally they're all doing the same shit or they're all innocent and you guys literally just never satisfied so what i'm gonna need y'all to do is literally remain respectful because this is someone's father this is someone's family member you can respectfully voice your opinions without being disrespectful because this person has died right so you don't have to like the man but you can literally voice your opinions without being mean rude or disrespectful if i see anything it's going to be deleted this is going to be an objective video we're going to talk about his presidency and that's that. Un understand, I'm working with sunlight. And the sunlight is going in and out. It it it's messing with me today. Excuse him. Excuse him. So in terms of personality, he was very headstrong, very charismatic. When he literally wanted to do something, he did that shit. He never let anyone get in his way. He was very brave, very stubborn. And he was very ambitious um very he dressed very well um as you can tell never seen this man without a suit i can't find any dress down photo of this man really like very rare and i don't know i'm like is this just a presidential thing but i don't know even like other photos i'm like mm. he just always seemed to you know look his best little nice little shaved bald head or whatever appearance seemed to be really important to him he was a very get it done type of person he never let anything get in his way if he put his mind or his focus on something, he made sure it got done. And that honestly might have been his ultimate downfall. It is believed that part of the problem and part of the reason he might have been assassinated was his obsession with wanting Haiti to be great again and possibly trying to seek justice in terms of messing with the wrong people and seeking justice by punishing the wrong people. If that makes sense, if you guys can read between the lines. This presidency starts with Michelle Martelly, Sweet Mickey. Now, honestly, I alternate. Jovenel, Moe, Sweet Mickey, and Michelle Martelly. I call everybody by everything, okay? Y'all know who I'm talking about. You guys should definitely watch my video. If not, do your research. If you know the knowledge, you know the knowledge. This actually starts with Michelle Martelly being pushed out of office a little bit early. Now, Michelle Martelly actually did his full five years. However, he was pushed a little bit early, okay? He was pushed out a little bit early due to people being very, very annoyed by how he was dealing with his presidency. People did not like him, okay? People were kind of up to here with Michelle Martelly because, quite frankly, his presidency was very, very lackluster. He wasn't really doing much, okay? He ain't do nothing real special. So people were just like, mm, you gotta go. And people noticed how he was really, really backing Moe's, okay? He was very, very adamant on pushing Moe's for his Tet Kale party. Yes, I said Tet Kale. If you guys are not aware what Tet Kale means, Tet Kale means bald head. Why are Haitians always fucking making a joke out of everything? I don't know how you can form a political party and call it the bald head party. But if you guys are also not aware, Haiti has a lot of parties, like literally over like a hundred different parties, like a lot of different political parties. That's another issue within itself, but whatever, okay? He had a Tet Kale party and literally he pushed Jovenel as his 
candidate. And it was to the point where he essentially put Jovenel on the map. No one knew who Jovenel was until Mickey came and put him to the forefront in terms of politics, in terms of popularity. So at that point, Moe's kind of garnered that vote, but at the same time, it was kind of strange only because Moe's was kind of known on the outskirts on the uh, Port de Pa type of area, right? So I just have to get this clear because I already know a lot of people are going to talk about this because it's always been up to debate. And this is actually part of the reason a lot of people think he was assassinated, right? So essentially, Jovenel was elected president in 2016, towards the end of 2016. But since a lot of people kind of pushed Mickey out because they thought he was going to ring the vote, they didn't really care for how he was running the country. He didn't do shit. They thought his time was up. Blah, 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 blah. They didn't allow him to run the elections like he was supposed to, okay? He didn't get to complete the elections. Within the first round of the elections, Jovenel actually polled really well. He got about like 30%, and then I think with the second poll, he did like 50-some percent, which again, for nobody, that's really well, but again, he was backed by the current president, who also still had a really good polling, even though people were really upset, but he still got pushed out of office, which kind of delayed shit. Honestly, these elections were definitely fucked up okay like i'm telling you delay on delay on delay there was lots of accusation of fraud so the timeline was really really horrible so with that being said since the timeline was so fucked up this man was not able to get into office until february of 2017 mickey was forced to step down in 2016 people believe that that's when his term started in 2016 meaning he should have stepped down February of 2021. And that's when a lot of people were saying, oh, he's a dictator. He's this, he's that. He's fucking up. He should have left office in 2021. And he's like, uh, no, I didn't start till February of 2017. Therefore, I'm not done till February of 2022. So I'm staying until February of 2022. So this is where the problem arises. So comment down below, what do you guys think? Because technically per the ever-changing constitution that Haiti loves to change like they change clothes, he technically did start the term as soon as Mickey left in terms of like how that, like realistically, yeah, as soon as the person leaves office, that is when you start, but let's be real. How you gonna start with riots? How you gonna start with there is no real winner? Like there's no, there's no real announcement. Like so you either wanna follow the constitution or you don't, okay? Well, the constitution says the clock starts once the other person leaves office while technically you guys don't follow the constitution anyway. But it's like, that don't make no sense. The nigga wasn't even doing shit. The fuck? Like, I just can't. Not only did this man refuse to leave office when he was supposed to, he also didn't hold elections for the people that left when they were technically supposed to in the eyes of other people. He basically tried to change the constitution. Um, and those changes that he wanted to make would, out, would also make it so that presidents could stay longer if they wanted. They also made it so that he could not be persecuted or any other president could not be persecuted for doing wrong things in office. And those changes also would make it so he just had more power as president and without his office's permission to do things. Because as president in general, in most governments, the president is like honestly a puppet. You still have to sign off on shit. But honestly, in Haiti, most of these presidents are pretty much lone wolves anyway. They kind of do things on their own. But honestly, this new constitution would give him more power to do things on their own. But honestly, the pandemic and a lot of opposition kind of stopped him from doing much of anything. But to be honest, all of it was a bad look. Like all of it made him look look really really bad anyway and a lot of people were very very pissed off so thank god for opposition and uh covid because he could have changed the constitution we're gonna touch back on that later but let's just rewind and get into jovenel his life and his career real quick right because i know that's something i had to touch on because i know there's gonna be so many people commenting on that before i even get started okay so jovenel was born june 26 1968 in to the iot now very sad because he died like really shortly after his birthday sad shit so his family actually moved to Port-au-Prince and he got his education at Ecole Nationale de Drolon and Lucie Touchet de la Vichere and Centre Cultural du Collège Canada Haitien I hope I said all of those right I've been working on my enunciation or pronunciation I've been working on my words okay 
We fat DC. I did the best I could. While in school, that's where he met his wife, Machin Etienne Joseph, and they got married in 1996. Oh wow, that's the same year my parents got married. Interesting shit. And they have three kids, not in the same year, but just putting that out there. They have Jo Marley, Jovenel Jr., and Jo Varlin. Jovalin, Jovalin. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not saying it right, I apologize. After that, they end up moving to Port de Pa. Now, Port de Pa is all the way in the northern part of Haiti. Like, what I'm telling y'all, like, all the way over there. It is in literally the northest part of Haiti. That nice little tip right there, that, that nice little tip. I'm gonna be saying Nordwest and Nordest. Two different things. There's Northwest and Northeast, but it kind of sounds the same. So to not get confused, I'm gonna have to say it in English, okay? So they went to go settle in Northeast. They went to go settle in Northwest. I'm gonna say Northwest in English, but in Creole it's Northwest. But there's also Northeast, which is the Northeast, but I'm gonna say Northwest because, you know, it's easier to follow in English. Northwest is one of the most northest parts in Haiti, and that is where Port de Pa is. And they essentially went there to go help. They went over there specifically to help go, to help develop one of the most rural parts of Haiti. Now, Port de Pa is actually very rural, like on day y'all, like outskirts rural. The only part of Port de Pa that's not really rural is like Tortuga Island, Tortuga, Tortuga, I can't even say it. Island, which like a lot of people go to for vacation. I'm sure a lot of you guys know. The coastline, Tortuga Island, like, you know, vacation. It's really rural. It's very community, tight knit. That's literally, there's nothing there, okay? There's really nothing there. It's a lot of open land, you know? It's very, very barren. So while in Port de Pa, he started his first business, which was Jamar Auto Parts, which is actually still open today. Soon after, he started his agricultural bonon project, which is Plantons, guys, if you guys are not familiar. I don't know why when I was looking this up, it kept saying banana. I'm like, oh, American, y'all. Bonon is Plantain. It's not bananas. They kept saying banana man. No, bonon Plantons, guys. Plantons. And basically, this was a project that stretched Bonon, okay, Plantons from 25 acres across Nordest, which is the Northeast province, or I should say, departments of Haiti. Now, the Northeast is kind of like the other little northern um, part of Haiti, which is another department of Haiti, which is actually very famous for anti-American rebels in the 1930s around, um, I believe, one of the first world wars. So it's actually like a hot spot um, known for like lots of rebels and like revolutions and things like that. But anyways, Fun little history fact. He was just very well known for like using land and stretching it and using it for agricultural purposes. He was very big on using Haiti for agriculture. That's what he believed would progress Haiti and make Haiti great again. He believed that the way Haiti would grow and the way Haiti could be great would be to use its land for those purposes, for agricultural exports and imports. Part, he later on partnered with civilian water and nearby politicians to bring safe drinking water for the people in the Northeast. Partnered with civilian water and some local politicians to establish a safe water drinking plant. Partnered with civilian water to establish a safe water drinking plant for the people in Northeast. By 2012, he founded Argitrans. I hope I'm saying that right because I'm gonna be saying that the entire video. And if I'm not saying it right, I'm sorry. Je suis, forgive me, forgive me. Argitrans S.A. or As-A, As-A, S-A. I don't know what the hell the S-A stand for, but I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't bother to look that up. And this introduced the agricultural project to Nari Bayo and True de Nord and helped create Haiti's first agricultural free trade zone. And this was 2,500 acres of Bonon Plantation, bruh. Bonon Plantation. Can you imagine 2,500 acres of Bonon Plantation? And this earned him the name of the Banana Man, a.k.a. the Bonon Man. This shit is wicked. That's a lot. 
the original premise of this was to actually import and export bonon, okay, and to be able to establish trade with other countries for Haiti. It was supposed to be like a lucrative situation, you know, so Haiti can like, you know, establish with the big dolls. And the first mode of business was to actually export bonon to Germany. Only two crates of bonon was ever delivered. I don't know what happened with that. I couldn't find any reasons as to why that ever happened. It's still a really good milestone. But nonetheless, things were looking good for him, okay? He's literally from the outskirts at this point, you know? He came from the outskirts, came to the capital, very educated, went back to help in the outskirts, you know, since he was a kid. This is something he always wanted to do. He always looked at all of this open land and was like, you know what, this is something that we can use to bring money back to Haiti, you know? We can use this land to bring money back to Haiti. We can use this land to make Haiti great again. We can use this land to actually make a name for ourselves. And he did that. And some very powerful people were taking notice of this. The government actually gave him lots of money to fund these businesses, okay? They offered him tax-free access to the land that he had these Bonan projects were on. Not only that, he had 15 years income tax exemption and custom duties on the purchase of capital equipment for his businesses. Oh, no, 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 it gets worse. And $6 million loan for his new company of Agitrons. Let me go start a business in Haiti. What the fuck? Hey, yo, nigga, what? I ain't never in my life. I'm like, so this is what it's like to be elite. Now, you guys are sitting here probably like, he, he, what? Yes. Yes, bitch. So at this point, you have a man who literally came from nothing, who literally just became something. He, he, he caught a bag or a, a couple mil. And then this is not even excluding the anonymous donors he had. Like on top of that, he had like a lots of anonymous donors who was just giving him Racks all racks all racks. Racks all racks all racks. I'm like, how? Cobb. It, it, it pays to own a business in Haiti. It, it pays to make impact. Cause I'm like, that's a lot of money. And mind you, this is the government offering a lot of this shit. A $6 million loan, you can't afford to feed the fucking people. You can't afford to have 100% running electricity in the motherfucking country on a consistent basis. You can't afford to have plumbing on a regular consistent basis. Haiti, I need answers. I need fucking answers. This don't make no damn sense. Nah, bruh. No, 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 oh, no, 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 what? You guys want to know how much these anonymous donors was giving? It literally is said to believe that there was literally at least, okay, this is literally at least, meaning there could have been more. This was at least $10 million worth of anonymous donors. $10 million worth. And then not to mention, he gained a very powerful front. Oh, wait, oh, you guys are probably wondering, whose government is this? Ah, y'all know damn well this was Sweet Mickey's government. Okay, this was Michel Martelly's government at the time. As you guys remember, Michel Martelly was president from 2011, okay, to 2016. So this was Michel Martelly's government giving him this fucking money, giving him this $6 million loan, giving him this tax-free access to the land, giving him 15 years tax exemption, giving him all of this bullshit. And then all of a sudden, they buddy, buddy. <laughs> all of a sudden, oh, this is my new candidate. Y'all see how this shit coming full circle? Y'all, that shit, why? I'm like, well, I need to go make some fucking politician friends too. Shit, I'm uh, running for president. I can't, I was born in America, but shit, could y'all change that rule? Y'all change the constitution like y'all change clothes, man. Like, shoot, change the new the constitution, please. Can I just be why I become president? Please, because what? They go, no, I'm in, I'm in shock right now. When I was reading that shit, I was like, this is not a coincidence. This shit is very strange. Now, all of that money he was given was specifically given to him so that he can employ 3,000 employees, okay? This was mainly because he was supposed to employ people, okay? and apparently and allegedly he only employed about 600 to 700 employees now i saw that he actually did employ 3,000. i want to know i don't know comment down below i saw that he didn't employ 3,000 that he was supposed to i saw people that said he did i, I don't know how accurate that is but i don't know so let me just put this in here it's funny even though i know that social media is not the only life okay maybe you know michelle martelly is busy and he got other things to do 
But it's very interesting that, you know, he was backing him and all of this shit. But like, this is the tweet that he wrote when this man died. I, it's not doing it for me. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. Okay. Now, Jovenel did a lot in his, you know, professional career. But like I said, all of this was in Ondeo. Okay. This is in Port de Pa. This is nowhere near the capital. This is nowhere near the epicenter where anyone would know him. This is mainly like the commoner, right? So common people know him, but like the people that would vote, the people that literally have the ability to vote don't know him. A lot of people that live in Port de Pa or whatever can't really vote for Moe's. Like these people don't have the ability to vote. They're not registered to vote. It's kind of a double-edged sword. So, but on retrospect, you have the support of the, the sitting president. So it's like, ugh, it could go either way. But at the same time, people are kind of pushing for him to get out. So it's like, ooh, this could go either way. So he has the support of Mickey, but at the same time, a lot of people don't like Mickey. So now we're back to what I was talking about in the beginning. So at this point, shit is real rocky. A lot of people really don't like Martelly and a lot of people are pushing him out. But, you know, we have this new guy and a lot of people kind of like Moise because, you know, they heard of what he's done. You know, they see that, you know, he's pushing Plaintons and, you know, everybody love their Plaintons. Everybody like they born on. They're like, you know, he's a decent guy. You know, he he established water in Potipa. They hear about, you know, his, his business with the born on. They hear about, you know, all the things he's doing. They're like, you know, he seems very decent, but this Mickey nigga, he gotta go. Da, 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 you know, we'll vote for him, but Mickey, you gotta fucking go. So, it's not that hard to believe but it is it is a little strange and it, it's like mm, it, it is i don't know this this was hard y'all like comment down below <laughs> oh child so let's get into what his campaign was about okay so for moise's campaign he puts bioecological agriculture as a way to essentially save haiti right and since over 50 percent of haiti is rural and has a farmer background that was mainly his shtick that was his poll. And to be honest, I think a lot of that is a problem. And, oh, I might get some backlash for saying this. But part of Haiti's issue is one of two things, right? And you guys can comment down below if you agree or disagree. I feel like Haiti is either voting the same people in. You can't have the same people of a country in power. Because what happens is it creates an imbalance of power, right? So if you have a whole bunch of people becoming president and they're poor, it's gonna create a problem because they're gonna want revenge, right? They're gonna seek power, they're gonna steal money. And that's literally what we've seen. You put a poor person in power, you give them a little bit of money, they take it too far. That's literally what happens and it's been constantly happening. Or these people are innocent and they just keep, keep getting accused of the same shit. It's one or the other. So what do you think it is? Are these people innocent and they keep getting accused of the same thing? Or are we just constantly voting the same fucking people in power? He resonated with most of the population. Like a lot of these people are farmers. They work on farms, you know, they grow their own shit. And, you know, he was literally pushing like, you know, I'm gonna I'm do this for the farmers. I'm gonna do that for the farmers. And, you know, oof, child. Of course, there's something else I completely forgot to mention regarding the campaigns. There is a lot of talk regarding who funded these campaigns, even though he definitely had a lot of money. There's something I'm going to mention later on regarding money that he allegedly stole regarding Petro Carib and Venezuela's oil donation money. But of course, there was Mickey that allegedly probably put his own personal money. Of course, there was this money that I, of course, mentioned regarding his government giving him money. Of course, there's the elites of Haiti that have also been thought to have supported him wholeheartedly um and this is another reason why a lot of people called him a hypocrite you know they were like you know you wanted to be a crusade you know you wanted to be some sort of a robin hood however you took their money they supported you you were sitting here trying to act like you were one of us but at the same time you took their money even though you kind of seemed like you were trying to be the superhero of some sort you still took their money which is still dirty money but at the same time, in retrospect, the elite saw it as how can you be punishing us when essentially you're not paying taxes on your businesses and you took our money to help propel your shit. So it's like everyone was just mad all the way around and this just did not end well for him at all. <laughs> he already secured their vote and of course he had the Mickey people vote and a lot of people was like, you know what? Since we support him, we'll support you. So that was already a vote there. But of course, there was opposition as well. But a, that's already a solidified vote. And of course, like I said, there was a theory there that he put 
him in power so he could patch the torch. If you guys are not aware, in Haiti's presidential terms, you are only allowed to run for five years and you can only run twice if you leave office. So you can't run five and five. You could only run five, let someone else be president and then run five again. You could run for president twice, but someone has to run before you run again. So people think that he put Moise in power so that he can be patched the torch again. And to be honest, watch out, I wouldn't be shocked. And of course, expressing support for his new wallet. <laughs> I mean, friend. Um, <laughs> I'm going to hell. I'm sorry. I, I'll just say it. This shit is very strange. You know, like you have a new powerful friend who not only has money in his own right, which is questionable at this point, because it said that honestly, Michel Martini was going broke. And that's why he became president, because it's also said to believe that a lot of people become president just for the money, because like a lot of these presidents end up becoming magically rich or magically wealthy after to become president in Haiti. So anyways, um, after he, you know, was running for president, it's like as if he carbon copied everything Marta Lee stood for. Like everything that Marta Lee said he was gonna do. He pushed for universal education and healthcare, energy reform, rule of law, sustainable jobs, environmental protection, ecotourism, agritourism. And honestly, that's cool. Those are all things that Haiti needs, but you have five years. And these are things that people have wanted to establish in Haiti for years, right? And this is what all politicians do, they lie, right? All politicians lie. But this is the thing, with Haiti, nothing has changed, uh, like ever. And not only do you have five years, but you're also working against um, a lot of people that have stolen money, a lot of money that no one knows where it goes, and a lot of like elite and a lot of other powerful forces, a lot of foreign entities that don't want to see you win. You have to pick a few concrete things that you could change today. Well, like, you know, that you can actually do that you can actually, like, start working on. Because at this point, it's like, nigga, where do you think you about to get any of this shit done at? And then on top of that, like I said, these were things that Mickey said he also wanted to do. So it was like, child, pick your own shit. Like, a lot of people were just sitting there like, mm, okay, like, moving on to elections. So by the time elections roll around, Moise was the president of the Chamber of Commerce by this time in Port de Pop. So since Haitians done forced Mickey out of office before he could finish the elections, um, he couldn't finish the elections. So the elections were a fucking party per usual. Constant delays, alleged fraud, constant riots and violence. And I don't know why I even researched the elections at this point because it's literally the same story. I don't even understand the point. Like every time I do one of these videos, it's literally the same fucking story over and over again. Yeah, people were mad. Oh yeah, people were fighting. And then they researched the election. They found out the person had negative 2% of the votes, but they still won anyway. And then people, are, it, why do I even bother? It's always the same shit. So honestly, same shit happened, right? But this one went a little bit differently and honestly, it caused way more problems. This is why we're here today talking about this a lot sooner than we wanted to. So again, Limois received about 32% of the vote in the first round. So if you guys are not aware, Haiti does its elections in rounds, right? And basically it kind of goes based off of first round, second round. And if you win or don't win, that kind of determines whether you go into the first or second round. If you win over 50%, that means you don't have to go into another round, blah, blah, blah. But if you win less, then you go to another round with the next person. It's kind of confusing, but all you got to know is there's rounds, right? So basically, Moise received about 32% of the vote the first round in October of 2015. And there was over 54 candidates. Why is there 54 candidates? Now, among these candidates, of course, we had Jeet Celestin because Jeet Celestin's always running for president. Honestly, let's just talk about him real quick. Jeet Celestin's always running for president to the point where I just want to see what Jeet Celestin can do. Jeet Celestin is ridiculously qualified to be president, always running for president, but he never wins. I want to know, bro, y'all comment down below if you know anything about Jeet Celestin. Like, what do you think? I want to know why he never wins. Like, he never wins. He's always running, y'all, like every day, every time, bro. He ran against Preval, he ran against Martelly. I think he ran against Iris D too. He's run for president so many times. And I'm like, first of all, who's putting money into the campaign? Are they upset that he never wins? Is he upset that he never wins? I'm upset that he never wins at this point. Every single time I do one of these videos, he's literally on the ballot. Like he's never winning. And it's like, oh my God, like I'm so disappointed for this man. Like <laughs> I'm so sad for him. Like he's never winning and it's not fair. Maybe doing this man so dirty. He might one day, like maybe now, like maybe he can run now. Cause like, damn, can we give him a chance? Could y'all please 
go for him, Katie. Like, y'all just, I don't know. Com comment down below. I don't know. I haven't looked too much into him, but it's like, oh my God, like he's always on the ballot. So G. Celestin was, you know, runner up. He was in second place. And it's just like, damn, they don't want to see him win. And of course, he definitely said that the votes were fraudulent. Him and a lot of his supporters and a lot of other people were saying that the votes were rigged and this prompted everything to be stalled because people were mad. People were rioting and, oh, child, like, I'm talking about burning shit down. Like I said, the usual. What am I talking about? The usual. And oddly enough, an exit poll was done by IET Sentinel. And basically that showed that Moe's actually only got 6% of the vote and not 32% of the vote. And this basically made them have a postponement. Okay, they postponed the election. Where they do that at? Haiti. Okay, Haiti. That's where they do that at. So since they postponed the elections, because he only got 6% of the vote, apparently, this caused the problem. So this is where all of this whole hoopla, like I said, happened. Again, y'all ran the president out early. He couldn't do elections how he's supposed to postpone. Then this whole situation happened, fraudulent shit, postponed. So now people took to the streets, you know, they're doing the usual things of protesting or whatever. And it's just like, y'all didn't want Mickey to rig the elections. Y'all didn't like what he was doing as president. And now, I mean, it looks like someone rigged some shit because it, the same outcome still happened anyway. So anyways, by November of 2016, anyways, the new election is held. And now, Moe's wins the election with 55.67% of the fucking vote, beating out 26 other candidates now. But four of these other candidates already claimed they won the election before the results were even out. I, I don't know how that happened, but okay. Al Fuchita, the fuck are you talking about? Munsayo, you said my family. What? I'm just sitting here like, how do 50 something percent? Child. I'm like, um. But of course, as I said, if you went over 50, whatever, no more rounds. So since he beat out basically over 50%, he didn't have to do another round. So he basically won. Whoop the fucking do. Now, of course, people were upset, but what did I say? Per usual, people were upset. People started rioting, and since people were rioting and doing their usual, they had to postpone his swearing in and everything, and he wasn't sworn in until February 2017, and that brings me to the point that I was reiterating earlier, that he wasn't sworn in till later on. Even though he was elected in November of 2016, he wasn't sworn in till February of 2017, hence all of the confusion. So honestly, this all goes back to Haiti, please let the presidents do their fucking job and all of this wouldn't be a fucking problem. I understand you guys are upset. I understand you guys don't like people, but the problem with Haiti is you guys can't constantly act like toddlers when you don't like shit. And Haiti has been constantly doing that when they don't like shit, okay? You guys can't do that. That's not how life works. Haiti has like a, a, a real problem with authority. Like, I'm sorry, y'all just do. I have to hold you guys accountable. You guys can't do that because that's when shit gets murky. That's when shit gets confusing. You guys change constitutions when you want. You guys just roll around doing shit as you please and think you can't be held accountable for it. This is you guys being held accountable for it. You can't just change shit, like change clothes. So essentially everything is pretty fine. Okay, even though people are kind of upset how everything happened, people are fine for the first year. Everyone is actually pretty happy. Like everyone was pretty fine. Like it didn't seem like anything was going wrong. You know, he was actually making really decent progress. One of the first thing is he kind of divided opposition. So there was a lot of people that still didn't like him, but a lot of people didn't like him for different things. And it was as if like they couldn't even get along for the reasons as to why they didn't like him. And so they kind of divided themselves, if that makes sense. How do I explain? So basically if you don't like someone right and you don't like them for different reasons you can't hate the person on the same grounds for the same different types of reasons so you split up if that makes sense so a lot of that was happening so he was able to kind of like derail opposition to the point where they didn't have much to hate on anymore so that was really good especially in the house so a lot of people were just kind of forced to cooperate another thing is since there's so many damn fucking houses a lot of these houses are actually in the haiti house of government and parliament and senators and all of that so what he did was he actually was able to allocate funds to each of them evenly to kind of like shut them up and make them satisfied. So that was actually really good. And another thing that he managed to do that was really good, he was very present, y'all like, very. Now, personally, I personally do not agree or understand why the fuck he chose to have a private residence that he slept in 
regularly among civilians, okay? In the capital where all the bad shit happens. Now, my thing is, I really hate how people always highlight Haiti as being this horrible place, this unsafe, dangerous place where all this horrible shit happens. Honestly, I'm telling you this right now, all that bad shit happens in Port-au-Prince, which is the capital, in all of the hot spots, okay? All of those places that you hear about where all these things are happening is the hot spots, the capital, you know, Pantheon Field. That's where all that stuff is happening. And his house is literally in the capital where all the bad things happen all the riots, all of that. That's where his house is. And this makes no sense to me because it's like, why as the president would you go live there among civilians? You know, uh, according to a lot of witnesses, they said, you know, his security was lazy. They'd be sleeping. They'd be on their phone. Da -da -da. And I'm like, child, like this don't make no damn sense. But he was very present in the community. Remember how I said he made all of these damn promises? Well, a lot of these promises weren't really presidential promises. These were personal promises he made to the people. So even a lot of his enemies that have done interviews, you know, you guys can look them up. I have some of them linked down below. They said that even though they didn't even like him, which is crazy, like, man died. Like, I know you don't like him, and you know, you can tell the truth. But it's like, damn, man died. Like, y'all can let it go. But they were like, you know what? I didn't like him, but he worked hard. You know, he was stubborn. I didn't like the nigga, but he worked hard. You know, like, he was out 6 a.m., driving around, working talking to the people, working, trying to rectify issues, working. Came up short, but he was working. And that's something that a lot of people really admired about him, you know? Like, he really wanted to see change in Haiti. He really wanted to actually reprimand people, which is, oh, child, probably another reason that we're here today talking about him. Um, he really wanted to kind of take back what Haiti was deserved in terms of, you know, the elite, in terms of the people who should have been taxed when they weren't, held accountable for their actions but weren't. People that owed money, that owed things to Haiti but never gave the money that they were supposed to give to Haiti. You know what I'm talking about, right? He basically was kind of like a, he, he wanted to be like a Robin Hood in a sense, you know? He wanted to save Haiti. He wanted to make change. You know, he wanted to make an impact. And it's really sad because he kind of went about it the wrong way. So by 2019, shit really went fucking left. So when you have this type of personality, especially this type of strong personality, you start getting a misinterpreted type of personality of being, you know, brave and being, you know, headstrong and, you know, so hard on your beliefs and being outspoken, etc. A lot of people may misinterpret that as being as being something completely different. So he quickly developed a different type of reputation that a lot of people may perceive as negative. So along with being perceived as a puppet because of the whole Sweet Mickey situation, he was also perceived as a tyrant, a bully, and of course a hypocrite. A lot of people saw it as, okay, so you want to pun it, you want to pun it, you want to punish the elites, you want to punish the rich, you want to do this, that, and the third, but you also are stealing money yourself. Now, of course, there was a whole situation, like I said, he was receiving lots of money from the government. Where that money at? That's lots of money. You want to live among us and act like you're one of us, but you're not. And then the petrol Carib situation made it worse. So a petrol Carib inspector was looking through the funds or whatever and was like, hey, yo, why is plaintiff man's businesses trying to bill money to Venezuela oil donations to build roads? You a plaintiff man. You, you a plaintiff man, homie. What the fuck? So basically they were accusing him of embezzling money because that shit didn't make no goddamn sense. And that news got out and woo chow shit went left from there because honestly, like let's be real, it doesn't make any sense. So honestly, there was never a valuable explanation there and no one can really explain it. And a lot of people honestly were just like, definitely it could have been for his campaign, but it was just like, you have all of these businesses, you have all of this shit going for you. You're exempt from taxes. You got loans, you got donations. And this is what you're doing. You know, you're stealing Venezuela's oil donation, sir. So Haitians were real fucking upset because it's like, bro, like, how dare you? You know, like Venezuela is a really good ally of Haiti. So it's like, oh, child. After that, starting to accuse him of using gangs to silent opposition and basically saying that he was ordering kidnappings and basically letting all the violence and chaos in the country slide. And I mean, honestly, I want you guys' opinions down below, right? I feel like, to be quite honest with you, presidents are presidents. They're not really God, right? And I feel like 
like I said, <laughs> all the presidents are accusing the same shit, right? Um, and like, I don't know what you guys expect these presidents to do, right? Like, so when someone gets killed outside, right, in America, you expect Joe Biden to like talk about it. But I understand in certain aspects because there was one situation that I saw where apparently his next door neighbor was killed and he didn't even say anything about it. Mind you, he lives among civilians. And this is why I'm like, you live among civilians, bro. Like, why do you live among these people if you're not gonna like, you know, say anything when your neighbor gets killed? You know, so it's, it's just, you know, like things like that. Like you can't be a civilian and be president, but then, you know, act like you don't know that when shit happened. Like in those types of situations, it makes sense. But at the same time, he's president when it's like a million miles away and he's over there like, you know, but you know, a lot of people have said that, you know, he's ordered hits or, you know, turned a blind eye to like, grand scale things that has happened and it's like ugh, he's only one person so i mean i, I feel like it's, it's, a little, it's a little iffy there right he is one person and to be honest he didn't have much of a government for a lot of it or a lot of transitioning governments for a lot of his presidency so that's very subjective and i feel like a lot of these opinions that are coming out about him are a lot of people who didn't do their research and they're just following a lot of what their family said and honestly it's it's just not really fair i feel like a lot of people need to do their research before they talk about these presidents or about Haiti in general. Like, I'm not concerned of what anyone has to say about Haiti until they do their research. When you do your research, then we can have a conversation. But, like, until you, like, really do your research and find out about Haiti and, and see what America's done, what France has done, United Nations, like, until you do your research, then we can have a conversation. But it's like, when y'all just be talking out y'all ass like this, I just be sitting there like, like, it's certain things are just common sense, right? Like, he's a president and things happen in Haiti every day. You expect them to literally talk about shit every two seconds. Haiti is a very active country with a lot of crazy shit going on. Like, you expect them to really come out and say things every two seconds. But of course, this was especially a problem for him because he was a man of the people. He's all around. He's up at 7 a.m., 6 a.m. or whatever, you know, acting like he's doing the shit that he wanted to fulfill, okay? These were things that he said he was going to do on his own. He fought against the elite. He was a relentless workaholic. He was brave. He was strong. He was out working. So now we have that whole situation that happened in 2021 um, when he was supposed to step down in February, but he refused to. So we can skip over that because we talked about it. And there was that whole situation with the constitution. Now, of course, not only did he not refuse to step down, he said that he was going to change the constitution and this constitution change was fucking bogus because not only did he want to change the constitution, but he also wanted to make changes that were just ridiculous and this is why people started calling him a dictator but honestly i feel like you guys need to choose your word wisely because you guys are very extreme with these words okay so basically this constitution change would make it so that presidents could basically add terms to their presidency it would make it so that he could not be prosecuted or any president could not be prosecuted for anything that they did while in office and it would also make it that office and the current government in power would have more power or like the current president would have more power on their own now honestly all most of Haiti's presidents have worked as lone wolves. Um, they usually don't have a government. <laughs> That's because I don't even know why. Like I, I don't know what it is about these presidents, but like they never seem to have a, a, a real prime minister or a lasting prime minister. They quit. They leave. They 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 get fired. I, I don't fucking understand. But for the most part, usually their 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 government is like broken, empty. I, I don't know what the fuck. And this time is no different. So basically, this new constitution would just like give the president more power but of course the pandemic as well as opposition stopped all of that from happening but thank god but right now of course it's no different because haiti's government is in fucking shambles because there is no fucking government because since homeboy was supposed to step down all of the people that were supposed to left at their time actually left at their time because apparently i guess they decided to follow the constitution that time so half the parliament is gone half the senate is gone the government is just looking like a happy in pizza pie so it's a hot ass mess so since the assassination everything is just a hot ass mess and elections are set for january 16th of 2022 so until then you guys are probably wondering who's in charge now yeah, we don't know. So if you guys are curious about the assassination and everything, I go over a lot in my video on the assassination. Please go watch it. Link down below or card it up above. Per the ever-changing constitution that Haitians love to change, like Kilot, they're they're technically supposed to hold an election, right? But since the election is not till January, realistically, in succession is the president of the Supreme Court, which is Rene Sylvest. But he died due to COVID. Which is very ironic because there's not many COVID cases in Haiti. Like, 
Haiti has had such a small COVID issue that like a lot of people have been so fascinated by like Haiti and COVID. Like they've been like, oh my God, these Haitians don't have COVID. Oh, Jet. That's why I don't understand why they're so upset that Haiti won't accept the fucking COVID vaccine. They don't need the fucking vaccine. Sit the fuck down. Shut the fuck up. But anyways, so now next in line and next in thought would be the acting prime minister. So this is a whole nother problem within itself and honestly shows that Haiti, honestly, we need to get it to fuck together, bro. So that would be the acting. And I'm gonna say act, acting. Take the acting. Prime Minister Claude Joseph. Now, Claude Joseph actually left, okay, office. Okay, he left office prematurely okay, he has declared himself prime minister but he actually left his job okay he's technically not prime minister ariel henry is prime minister and he was actually appointed prime minister a few days before jovenel died now let me just say this is iffy as fuck this shit don't make no damn sense and it is very fishy that whole little shit right there don't make no sense right before the president dies this man is appointed and claude joseph just stepped down and now he's out here acting like the prime minister he's in interviews he's the one that was like yeah you know if we have 15 days of mourning or whatever the fuck he's the one do on tv he's the one like literally living the whole prime minister life in the public eye meanwhile ariel henry's like um he's not prime minister i'm prime minister he's part of my government but Ariel, where are you at? <laughs> I don't understand. Well, Joseph has also asked the United States to send troops. Like, he's literally acting like the prime minister. Like, it don't even make sense. When in actuality, technically, for the prime minister to be the president of Haiti, they still actually have to be voted in by parliament. But there is no fucking parliament because... Jovenel never had elections to get a new parliament. Oh my God, this is a joke. This is really, really sad. Like y'all, this is really fucking sad right now. And then on top of that, what makes things worse is, so Joe Biden said that he's not gonna send troops. However, he will send Homeland Security and the FBI in order to assist with the investigation. So the next in line and next idea would be the president of assembly. They also won't have that. The next would be the Senate in parliament and the third of the Senate presided by Joseph Lambert. And he was the, actually the only one that was elected for anything, but he was also voted by parliament. But I mean, parliament is not complete. So technically that vote is kind of invalid, but at least he was voted by some shit. So technically Joseph Lambert is, te is like the only one that actually has the right to do anything in Haiti right now because he was voted by something. So it's like, oh. So we got three people playing tug of war with Haiti right now that think that they're in charge. So nobody knows who's in charge. Jovenel will always be known as the brave, a fearless leader who essentially wanted the best for Haiti, who had a vision. And honestly, that vision may have gotten the best of him. I wish this would have went different. And I really wish that he was able to finish out his term. I feel like a lot of the past presidents have been able to not only invoke riots and, you know, cause problems, but they were also able to walk out without being killed. Okay. They were not, you know, they didn't get a bun on thrown at the ass. All right. So it's really unfortunate that this had to end this way. And I really want to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. I really want everyone to keep it respectfully. And most importantly, I really, really want to hear what you think should happen next in terms of a president. What kind of president do you think Haiti needs? Who do you think is responsible for what happened to Jovenel? And why do you think he was assassinated? Yeah, this was a long one. So yeah, make sure you guys comment down below. If you don't have any opinions, just comment down the heart because child, I need one. I worked very hard on this, my mental health is not that great right now so i definitely need to know that this was appreciated with that being said make sure you guys like share subscribe do all that and i'm gonna see y'all next time bye